Okay, so what I want to point out here, the first thing you have to do with your bumper is the factory puts this like a little toe, like if you ever needed to pull or tow somebody or something, I don't know, maybe, I'm not really sure what, what you'd ever do with it, but anyway, if you wanted to tow somebody or something, it's, they've got this little piece that comes off the factory bumper bracket here. Well, anyway, I scribed a line straight across. Basically, you just make it look like this side. That, this has to come off. So what I did is I cut it nice and neat and straight. So that way, and I'm going to keep this if I ever want to put it back on to keep it factory. I can just set it there and then put a nice weld and grind it off. Anyway, you got to cut this off and save it. Because when you when you do put the bumper on, those, those will be in the way, or that will be in the way. So basically, the the gussets don't interfere because of these cutouts in the bumper. See the cutouts here in the bumper? They fit right around that that gusset that I showed you earlier. And down here. I added this two inch by quarter inch thick piece of flat iron to the bottom. And the reason I did that, I don't even know if I really needed to do that, but just to make sure the hitch is real strong and it's kind of, it, this way it has like a three point, three point mount. So this being one, this being two, and then this being the third. This, these two holes right here, go to the main support for the engine so there's a bracket that that runs underneath the engine so you you catch those bracket bolts with this bracket here so this is all two inch by quarter inch thick mild steel so basically it just made a square frame that attaches to that crossbar, the main engine support. So this piece right here is 14 inches long. Okay. And then actually they're all 14. So three three of these pieces are these are 14. 14, 14, 14. And this one across the back is 12. So all standard sizes, I tried to keep it simple. So I'm going to take the bumper off again here and I'll flip it up. And we'll talk about this bracket here some more. What I did, this thing weighs about 35 pounds too, just, just thought I'd mention it. So, right here you'll notice I added a couple of, looks like two by two, yeah, two by two on top of this quarter by two. I added an eighth inch thick other piece of mild steel right out here on the ends because I threaded this plate. Right here this plate is threaded because I couldn't put a nut on here because that rear bracket that that this bolts to, there's some clearance issues there. So if you drill through this whole thing to put a through bolt, you're gonna have to put a nut and it's, it's gonna be in the way of the bracket, the, the motor mount bracket. So I threaded this plate right here. So the bolt slides through this plate from the bottom. It's, it's, a, the clear, it's a clearance hole in this plate and this one's threaded. Okay, and the back one, back here, these bolts, <clears throat> I just drilled through holes and put a nut, a nice fancy little acorn nut, stainless steel. I tried to keep the hardware stainless steel. Makes it look pretty. Um, okay, and over here, there's a reason for, for this 
if you look at this bracket on this side, it's different than the one on the other side. The, the other side doesn't have this eighth inch thick plate right here. It's eighth inch thick by inch and a quarter wide. Is it, is it in focus? God, that's pretty close. Okay, so it's eighth inch thick, inch and a quarter wide, and it's six inches long. Okay, six inches long, and, and I just spot welded it to the top of this, the main bracket here. The reason for that is the bumper, one of the bumper brackets is thicker than the other, and it was due to that that toe, toe hitch uh, part that, that I cut off. I guess they beefed that bracket up more so it was stronger for in case you were towing somebody with it. Or pulling something with it. Yeah, see now this side isn't isn't gonna have have that uh, six inch by inch and a quarter plate by eighth inch thick on here. This is this is the side that had the uh, the hitch, uh, the toe hitch, the part this part that I cut off. Okay. And there's another reason why, if you come to the end over here, I had to weld right here an inch and a half it's, it's inch and three quarters same, same width as, as this width by inch and a half long plate quarter inch thick plate on here and again I'll grab the bumper and lay it on there and show you why so when I lay the bumper on here We're going to simulate it being being clamped down onto the or bolted down actually to the bus frame. So if you run a straight edge across here, see how this is all in the same plane here? This is like this simulates the frame of the bus. So when you bolt it up. If this plate was, if this quarter inch thick plate wasn't on here, there would be a gap. And also what I did, there's this third bolt here, way out on the end, it doesn't get used for anything. I don't even know why the factory put it there, but it's a good thing they did. So what you want to do is take a tap and clean it up, because most likely it's all full of crud and gunk and everything, and maybe some rust, but run a tap through this hole in the frame and pick up that third hole I just felt better about using all three holes than just the two that the bumper bolts to so let's come across the other side and I'll show you over here so see again if we lay this this simulates the the flat frame of the bus by adding this this quarter inch thick piece of flat it fills that void that would be between the frame and this bracket so it sucks it up nice and tight um, and back here I left I left about a quarter of an inch of overhang from that Harbor Freight store-bought receiver hitch it it sticks out past this uh, square tubing a, a quarter of an inch so basically when you clamp it up to this 
two inch tube you're gonna have it sticking out sticking past a quarter of an inch um, I made the the socket uh, holder for the trailer lights and stuff um, that's just a out of aluminum angle iron um, like I said I do plan on towing a trailer with this and I, I have a Kurt uh, trailer brake set up that I put it on the dash so I, I do have a braked trailer that I'm going to be towing so I just I, I kind of overbuilt it just to make sure that, that it stays together and I don't have any issues with it anyway um, let's see I'll, I'll go over these uh, gussets for the back too let me I'm gonna take the bumper off once again set it down okay so these gussets here these are inch and three quarters gussets okay it looks like yeah inch and three quarters make them fit nicely in there so both ways inch and three quarters from corner to top inch and three quarters from corner to this back side here and I put them from the end from the end of the step receiver hitch in I put them two inches in took from center from the edge here to the center of the gusset two inches in okay um, that's about that's about it I think I covered everything I don't think I talked about the gussets right right here that fill this this bracket in here I chose quarter inch thick mild steel here and just made a bracket that filled the whole length in um, from cor from end to end from this end to this end down here so basically I just laid the bracket on its side traced it out cut it cut a gusset to fill the whole thing in the reason you have to weld it on the inside the way I did is it needs to maintain that inch and three quarter thickness that inch and three quarter thickness because of how the the stock bumper brackets fit over this and I'll grab it again and we'll, we'll, I'll show you so see how, how it shaped this this channel shape right here we have to we have to maintain this inch and three quarter wide thickness here so when this comes down on here this gusset the gusset I just talked about doesn't interfere with with how it fits over the stock uh, bracket the stock bumper bracket and that's about it um, if you choose to make one of these yourself um, it can be done with a welder uh, it, it has to be a good size welder you don't want to use a little small 220 unit you want to be able to put some amperage in there and really get some good welds on there um, that's about all I can tell you about it <laughs>